My name is Kainde Abimbola. You are welcome to Global Tutor YouTube Video Classroom. The subject to be considered is physics. And the topic is fundamental and derived quantities. fundamental and derived quantities. What are fundamental quantities? These are the quantities that are independent, or in other words, this, these are the quantities that other quantities in physics are largely depends on. They are independent of other quantities. They can also be referred to as the basic quantities. In physics, we have three most important basic quantities, and they are mass, the three most Underline this most important, that is, we have more than three fundamental quantities in physics, but these three are the most important one. You can see in the bracket, there is kilogram in front of mass, which is the unit, which is the unit of mass. Also, we have meter in bracket, which is the unit of length, and we have seconds in bracket, which is the unit of time that is why it, most of the quantities in physics they are largely depends on these three we also have other fundamental quantities like amount of substance which the unit is in mole we also have electric current which has ampere as the unit and also we have temperature which the unit is in Kelvin. but these three they are the most important one and upon which every other quantities are likely the pension. We put this bracket, this unit in bracket, because in physics, the unit is very important. It is very important that any quantity you are given in unit in, in physics, you must put their unit in front of the quantities. Let's move to derived quantities. Derived quantities. Like in the fundamental quantity that are not dependent, derived quantities, these are the quantities that are derived from the fundamental quantities. They are derived from the, they are derived, they are, let's say, all dependent. They are dependent on fundamental quantities they are dependent on fundamental quantities and examples 
examples of derived examples are number one area two volume three velocity four force five momentum momentum all these quantities they also have their units and their unit is derived from one or two or all the three combinations of the fundamental or basic unit how do we get that for instance let's take the first one as an example the area you discover that the volume the area has a unit of area equals to meter p that is the unit of area how do we get this by combining you know our area our area is meter square sorry area is meter square because area is length times width because area is what length length multiplied by breadth multiplied by breadth and the unit of length is meter also the unit of breadth is also in meter that is why our area equals meter square and the next one is volume volume our volume equals the unit is meter cube how because the formula for volume is length times breadth times height length times breadth times height that is the that is the formula for the volume before i progress that's what we call si unit in physics what do I mean by SI unit? SI unit is the international accepted system of unit. Globally, internationally, there is accepted system of unit, and that's what we refer to as SI unit. So coming to this place, let's say all this one, they have the SI, they are the SI unit. They are the SI unit. That is, if you are given a unit of any physical quantities and the unit is not in SI unit, you must take the necessary compassion. Take for instance, let's assume you are given a unit of mass to be in gram. We all know that if the unit is in gram, we all know that one kg equals 1,000 gram so you need to do your necessary conversion by dividing whatever units you are given by 1000 therefore therefore one gram therefore one gram is got to is got to kg all over 1000 so whatever units you are given in 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 gram you must convert it to kilogram that is the SI unit of mass. Likewise, length. You know, we have millimeter, we also have centimeter. We have, we have 10 centimeter micrometer. So, what we are saying here is that whatever unit you are given that is not in the SI unit, you need to do your necessary conversion. That is why, in, in the right quantity, we have our area to be meter square, our volume to be meter cube. And also, let's move to the third example of derived quantities, which is velocity that is the third one velocity now before we can establish the units of velocity we need to know the definition of velocity what is velocity our velocity is defined as the time rate of change of distance but you know i said distance no it's not distance but rather it's displacement why because velocity is a factor quantity so we are still going there but that will be in another topic entirely but under these derived quantities we divide our velocity as 
rate of change of displacement with time that is velocity equals displacement all over time taken. And in some examples, you can also see this velocity can be replaced by speed. They had the same thing. The only difference is that the speed is a scalar quantity. Why velocity is a vector quantity is because velocity has both magnitude and direction. But under this direct quantity, is our displacement all over time taking. And it is what? It's in meter. Displacement is in meter. And time is in seconds. That is time. Then we can rewrite it as meter per second. You can see that this meter per second, this, let's say meter and seconds, is combination of length, the unit of length, which is meter, and the unit of time, which is seconds. The volume, let's say this volume, is meter cube, and that is the unit of length in three, multiply in three places. That's how, that's how we got our meter cube. And the area, the unit of, the unit of, also the unit of length, that is length times breadth, that's how we got the unit of area. Let's move to the next example, which is our force. Number four, which is our force. Which is our force. All this one, for you to know that they are derived from one or two combination of the basic or fundamental quantity and their units. Force. We all know the definition of force. We all know the definition of force to be product of mass and its acceleration. That is mass, mass times acceleration of a body. That is our definition of force. And acceleration can also be defined because if you are going, if you are trying to derive a unit, you must know the formula. And also, if the formula of a particular quantities or parameters is having another definition, then you must express that one. Now, we have acceleration. What is our acceleration? Is the rate of change of velocity with time. That is, our force becomes mass multiplied by accelerate, multiplied by velocity, velocity all over time. Mass multiplied by velocity all over time. Also, our velocity is also defined as displacement all over time taken. But because we have defined it here already, we we'll just take this meter per second, which is the unit of velocity. We we'll just put it here. We we'll just put it here. In that case, we'll be able to derive the unit for force, the unit of velocity. How? We have gotten it from the previous examples, which is example three, velocity as meter per second. Now what we do is that our force become, our force become mass multiply by our, our velocity, which is meter per second, then all over another seconds. We then have our mass to be in kilogram. We now have kg multiplied by m s times s equals to kg m all over s square. And we write it as kg meter per second square. That is the unit of force. You can see that we derive this one from the combinations of all the three most important basic 
unit, which are the mass. This for the length and this for the time. Now let's take the last examples. Momentum. Momentum. First of all, you must be able to define your quantities and express it with a formula before you can derive the unit for, for such quantities. Momentum is the product of mass and its velocity. Momentum is the product of mass. This is product of mass and its velocity. That is momentum. Let's denote momentum as M. That is our M, which is the momentum, equals to mass times velocity. Now, we have derived the unit of velocity in example three. Let's just insert it into this definition of momentum. Then what do we have? We now have kg multiplied by meter per second. And the final answer becomes kilogram meter per second. This is the unit of momentum. That is why in physics, there is no need for you to count the units of the physical quantities, but rather know how to derive the unit. If you know how to derive the unit, then you will know the unit of almost every physical quantities in physics. In other way, this momentum, which is mass times velocity, I want to bring out something from this velocity. What is that? Don't forget, in example four, we as I said, the acceleration is defined as velocity all over time. Let's come back to this momentum again. We want to express this, our velocity in terms of acceleration. How? You know that this becomes mass times which is acceler which is acceleration times time how how simply because our acceleration let's stop let's you know this one acceleration equals Velocity, velocity all over time taken. By cross multiplication, your velocity becomes acceleration times time. Therefore, velocity equals acceleration times time. Is that not time taken or time? It's the same thing. Now, we have our mass, we come back here, then our mass becomes mass times acceleration times time, which is our momentum becomes what? Mass times acceleration times time. What can we deduce from this formula? We can see that mass times acceleration times time. Let's underline this mass times acceleration. This mass times acceleration in example four, which is our force. You can see that the force is divided as product of mass and the acceleration of the body. That means this place can be referred to as momentum equals force times time. Since, since F equals and A, <laughs> we can see that our momentum becomes force times time. That is another formula for momentum. But you are still going to arrive at the same unit. It's still the same unit. 
Now, let's see this first time time is referred to as our impulse. That is, this is impulse. Impulse. That is, momentum, the same thing as impulse. This is how we derive momentum to be equal to impulse. Impulse. Momentum is same thing as impulse by putting our velocity to be acceleration times time and we get our L times T, which is the impulse. And that is the end of volume one. Under fundamental and derived quantities. Watch out for volume two in the next video.